everyone. Uh, welcome back to a new session on metabolism. In this session, we'll be dealing with urea cycle. You can see there are three groups of uh, organs based upon the kind of uh, excretory products, the, uh, whether it is ammonia, uric acid, or urea. The ammonotelic animals, we can see, they are uh, those animals which produce um, ammonia as excretory product and you can see the these include the aquatic organisms in aquatic i mean in the case of aquatic organisms what happens is the excretory product is mainly ammonia and this ammonia is water soluble uh, it is toxic again it cannot be stored in the cells it as soon as it is being produced it has to be uh, expelled out so what happens is, uh, since it is uh, uh, soluble in water, the, um, the aquatic organisms, they do have the leisure to get it uh, dissolved in water and be, get it expelled out in the form of ammonia. But in the case of the terrestrial organisms, uh, they don't uh, uh, have the leisure to uh, waste water for uh, removing the excretory product in the form of ammonia. So they have shifted or they have changed their uh, uh, like excretory product to form urea or uric acid okay so based upon whether it is urea or uric acid we have ureotelic animals and uricotelic animals the ureotelic animals they are terrestrial vertebrates including humans and there the ammonia which is produced as a result of the protein metabolism it is being converted to urea okay and this is what is referred as the urea cycle okay so in ureotelic organisms the ammonia which is produced as a result of protein metabolism uh, it, it is deposited in mitochondria of liver cells and is converted into urea and this is what is referred as a urea cycle so this is what is a urea cycle uh, an outline is this pathway it was discovered in 1932 by uh, Hans Krebs and Kurt Henselit, and hence this cycle is also referred as Krebs Henselit cycle. So, urea it is one of the end product of protein metabolism or the amino acid metabolism, and the nitrogen of amino acids it gets converted to ammonia. Okay, this is what uh, the basic uh, uh, like uh, basis of urea cycle is, and this ammonia it is getting converted to uh, it enters the urea cycle and get itself converted to urea which is being expelled out in ureotelic animals okay so um, the urea production occurs almost exclusively in the liver in the liver uh, it is actually um, um, urea it is being produced and then this urea it passes into the bl uh, bloodstream uh, and reaches the kidneys where it is again getting excreted in the form of urine okay so you can see here um, the hepatocyte a liver cell where the whole thing referred this cycle referred to the urea cycle and you can see it is getting completed in the cytosol and mitochondria okay so the enzymes which are involved in the urea cycle it is present in the uh, mitochondrial matrix and the rest are uh, present in the cytoplasm so hence the urea cycle spans in spans the um, uh, cytoplasm and mitochondria of the liver cells okay now we can see the step by step process the first step is the formation of citrulline so urea cycle it is accomplished through four steps the first step is formation of citrulline so i hope the picture is clear over here this is mitochondria uh, of the liver cell and this represents the cytosol okay so um, you can see here the alanine from the muscle the other amino acids uh, and uh, the glutamine okay so these gets converted to glutamate okay alanine from muscles amino acids etc it gets converted to uh, glutamate or glutamic acid okay and this enters the mitochondria uh, the glutamine uh, from the extra hepatic tissues that's other than uh, liver cells it gets transported to liver it enters the uh, mitochondria and it undergoes uh, conversion to glutamate with the help of the enzyme glutaminase okay so glutamate it is produced through various sources that's it okay this glutamate is the uh, it undergoes deamination process uh, during which ammonia is being produced the same thing the glutamate it un uh, gets converted to its corresponding alpha keto acid that is keto glutaric acid this deamination process is just being uh, catalyzed by the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase fine 
Now, the ammonia which is being produced as a result, it uh, undergoes conversion to carbamoyl phosphate. Okay, the enzyme is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. Okay, uh, carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 of the mitochondria, it catalyzes the condensation of ammonia ions with, you can uh, see here, the carbon dioxide, the bicarbonate, okay, carbon dioxide to form the carbamoyl phosphate. And here you can see two ATP molecules are consumed and it is an irreversible process. Okay, this is an irreversible process. And you can see that uh, the carbamoyl phosphate is the one which actually gets into the urea cycle. This is the urea cycle. Okay, the cyclic pat uh, pattern, you see, it is the urea cycle. Okay, so carbamoyl phosphate is the one which enters the, um, what do you call, uh, the uh, urea cycle. Okay, so it is involved in the citrulline formation and that is the first step of the urea cycle. So what happens is the citrulline, it is uh, here you can see it is synthesized from ornithin and carbamoyl phosphate and the whole process it is catalyzed by the ornithin transcarbamoylases okay this is the enzyme now you can see here uh, this carbamoyl phosphate is the first uh, is a uh, first substrate to take ammonia into the urea cycle or we can say it is the uh, uh, the first amino group to enter the uh, the urea cycle it is in the form of carbamoyl phosphate okay so here you can see the ornithin it combines with carbamoyl phosphate to produce the citrulline okay and the en uh, enzyme responsible is ornithin transcarbamoylases okay and uh, uh, the ornithin and citrulline these are amino acids basic amino acids but they are not the uh, amino acids or proteogenic amino acids they are not involved in the protein structure okay but it is being transported to uh, the mitochondria uh, the liver cells where it can be used for the synthesis of the um, whole process okay uh, it can be used for the urea cycle now the citrulline is formed fine the next step we have is the formation of arginino succinate okay and uh, this is uh, here you can see this is arginino succinate over here okay this is arginino succinate okay and you can see citrulline it gets converted to arginino succinate through an intermediate which is known as citrullyl amp intermediate okay so what happens during this reaction the uh, citrulline it condenses with aspartate you can see here the aspartate okay the second step it occurs in two uh, steps actually the second reaction citrulline to arginino succinate it takes place in two steps in the first step atp is uh, being used up right and it results in the formation of citrullyl amp intermediate and here this particular intermediate it uh, undergoes condensation with aspartate aspartic acid okay and this will result in arginino succinate okay so we can say in it uh, shall in nutshell it is actually citrulline it condenses with aspartate to produce arginino succinate okay uh, the, the this you can see the aspartic acid is the second uh, amino acid to be involved isn't it and hence here there is a uh, uh, second amino group this amino group is include uh, introduced into the urea cycle so the first amino group it entered from here isn't it the carbamoyl phosphate was the first contributor of the uh, amino group into this uh, urea cycle the second amino group in, uh, in, is introduced at this level you can see here where uh, the arginine succinate is being produced okay so this is the second step and here uh, again atp is getting converted uh, is being used up uh, and uh, amp is being released okay atp is getting converted to amp uh, and this it is being used up okay now the next step is formation of arginine arginine succinate it will give rise to arginine with the release of fumarate the fumarate which will enter the uh, the uh, the citric acid cycle. Okay, so here this the enzyme involved is arginosuccinase. Okay, arginosuccinate it undergoes uh, actually cleavage, isn't it? And this is being uh, catalyzed by the enzyme arginosuccinase. So arginosuccinase cleaves arginosuccinate to give rise to arginine and fumarate. Okay, this fumarate it enters the TCA cycle, or you can say the gluconeogenesis or other 
such are the metabolic pathways okay so we have the arginine now now this arginine you can see it is diamino amino acid isn't it and this arginine it uh, uh, like contributes or uh, it undergoes reaction where ornithin is regenerated and urea is being produced okay so the fourth step is the formation of urea here okay so what happens during this process the arginine uh, uh, actually you can see here the uh, this is catalyzed by the enzyme arginase okay so arginase it cleaves arginine to yield urea and ornithine okay so here ornithine is getting regenerated and this ornithine it will enter the mitochondrial matrix okay and you can see what all things are required water molecule is required here okay and uh, the uh, uh, arginase enzyme it require the uh, coenz as coenzymes or cofactors we can say it requires cobalt and manganese ions okay so arginase is uh, mostly found in the liver and while the rest of the enzymes uh, are also present in other what you call the uh, tissues okay arginine is specifically found in the liver so it is very important in urea cycle okay so we can just see uh, the urea cycle the the four step process it is a urea cycle the first one is the formation of citrulline which takes place inside the mitochondria okay and this here what happens is carbamoyl phosphate it condenses with ornithine resulting in the formation of citrulline and carbamoyl phosphate is the first uh, like uh, amino group contributor to the um, urea cycle this reaction is catalyzed by ornithine tr trans carbamoylase and it takes place inside the mitochondria the citrulline produced it gets transported into the cytosol where the rest of the um, uh, urea cycle is completed the citrulline it undergoes conversion to form arginino succinate uh, where aspartate and atp is being used up that is aspartate is the second amino group contributor over here the first one was carbamoyl phosphate and the second is aspartate uh, is th they are the uh, amino group contributors now citrulline it gets converted to argino succinate which undergo cleavage to produce arginine and fumarate this arginine it uh, again undergoes cleavage with the help of the enzyme arginase to produce urea and ornithine this urea produced is still in the liver cells isn't it now this it gets transported to the kidneys uh, through blood and from there it will get expelled out okay during the excretory process so this is urea cycle so you can see it is in a nutshell the ammonia plus carbon dioxide it gets that is um, i mean uh, amino acids they are getting converted to this one broken down as another and then uh, decarboxylation deamination process and these and uh, you can see here it gets converted to carbamoyl phosphate with the help of carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 and this it combines with ornithine uh, to produce uh, citrulline and then this citrulline it moves out okay this is mitochondria and this is uh, cytosol okay this moves out into the cytosol where it combines with aspartate utilizing atp uh, it gets converted to arginosuccinate which gets cleaved into fumarate and arginine and this arginine further it cleaves into urea and ornithine the urea it gets transported to kidney for excretion so overall equation we can say the uh, of the urea cycle is ammonia the carbon dioxide i hope you remember where the carbon dioxide comes into isn't it it is this way for the formation of carbamoyl phosphate okay so the uh, bicarbonate uh, carbon dioxide in the form of bicarbonate ion then atp molecules and water is being used up for the production of urea adp uh, inorganic phosphate amp and hydrogen ions so this is about the urea cycle now why urea cycle is very important you can see if urea is not produced okay if urea is not produced this ammonia it gets build up okay it will the, it gets accumulated okay and this uh, will result in hyper ammonemia that is ammonia concentration in blood it may increase okay this may lead to toxicity ammonia is toxic so it may lead to to toxicity and if the concentration is too high it is going to cause uh, actually uh, affect uh, most of the parts of the body even the brain cells okay so here uh, uh, what you call the urea cycle is so very important to bring down the uh, concentration of the ammonia
okay uh, the uh, it may affect the uh, like normal functioning of the body um, normal functioning of the cells uh, it causes vomiting mental retardation accumulation of ammonia in the cells of brain etc okay fine thank you